Florida, there are several ridges that run north-south parallel to the peninsula, and these ridges for Florida are at fairly high elevation. So um, the Lake Wales Ridge is the one of highest elevation of those ridges. It's about 91 meters above sea level. And what's interesting about that is that historically, geologically, uh, in geological history, Florida has been covered over by sea water. And so um, during those sea level rises and falls, this ridge remained above water. And so there is a number of endemic plant species along that ridge, many of which are federally threatened and endangered, in part because there's a lot of cattle ranching, the citrus groves, and also a lot of housing development um, in that region. So I've been collaborating with um, researchers at the Archibald Biological Station um, in Lake Placid, Florida, to look at plant reproductive biology and a couple different species along the ridge. Clitoria fragrans, which is shown here um, as a large showy flower. This is a chasmogamous flower. It also makes really tiny cleistogamous flowers, which um, self, and this one has the possibility of outcrossing. This species is federally threatened and only found um, in three of the counties where it was once found in at least five counties in Florida. So as I was interested in learning a little bit about the plant reproductive biology of the species and a little bit about its floral development. So for the chasmogamous flowers, I went out in the field and bagged flowers that um, had not yet opened. And then the next day when they had opened, I actually conducted hand pollinations with either self-pollen or outcross pollen. And I had expected, because this is the plant's with this type of flower, this is the plant's only opportunity to actually receive outcross pollen. I had expected the outcross pollen to perform better than the self-pollen. Whereas with these small cleistogamous flowers, the plant has the opportunity to self at, at any time. It turned out that there was no significant difference in how the self-pollen uh, versus the outcross pollen performed. They both had similar percents of germination and both of them were very high. And they also, um, in terms of looking at pollen tube growth, the, the germination, the pollen tube growth down the style, and then this image here shows pollen tubes actually reach the ovary and, and um, go into the ovule. It turns out that the percentage of pollen tubes that reach the ovule was also not significantly different for self versus outcross pollen. So reading the literature on cleistogamous, chasmogamous um, flower producing species, some nice work's been done by Teresa Cully on violets, and she noticed that sometimes these chasmogamous flowers do have a delayed selfing mechanism. So it's quite possible that even though we think of this as, a, as mostly outcrossing, in some species, um, even the chasmogamous flower might ultimately self. And so that's something I'd like to go back and, and take a look at. Um, I, because the flowers were bagged, I also tested them for the presence of nectar to see if that was a reward for pollinators. There was no nectar in the, in the flowers. Um, there clearly would be a pollen reward, and the species also produces a fantastic scent, which smells to me like artificial grape to mothballs, but for some pollinator, um, it must be attractive. Uh, in terms of in the field, I only saw large bumblebees visiting the species. So something else I was curious about was um, for, for the state government agencies that want to go out and census this plant and learn a little bit about it, pl its plant reproductive biology, they conduct a census on a single day. So when they go to the population, they need to have some, if possible, I, I was looking for some morphological characteristic that they could determine if a fruit had been produced by one of the cleistogamous flowers or one of the chasmogamous flowers. And so I took a series of measurements as the buds were developing of these two types of flowers. And it turns out that the calyx of the chasmogamous flower was significantly longer, and it's even more flared than um, the cleistogamous flower. So this shows some measurements I took when the chasmogamous flower had first opened of the calyx size and when the fruit was fully extended and I could see individual sort of large seeds. And with the cleistogamous, this is when the fruit is um, fairly extended and this is when you can see large seeds. And there was never an overlap in the length of the calyx. So if you want to go out and census these populations and have a sense of how many fruits are from cleistogamous versus chasmogamous flowers, that's an excellent field characteristic to use. So I'm looking forward to working more with the species learning if it does have delayed selfing, as well as looking at a data set that I have of floral um, bud development of the two types of flowers. So, thank you.